Hey guys, this is Michael here. So today I wanted to show you guys what a real life growth plate or bone it will growth plate and bone would look like. And what I have in front of me are pig bones and the growth plate. Um, obviously I'm not a not like a more was a mortician or a doctor, so I can't get to cadavers or hu real life human bones. So the best thing I could do is probably find pig bones. I was I was at this restaurant two days ago, and um, while well, they were surfing pig, and then the, all, along the side, I see that all these bones lying up there. Obviously, they cut off the meat and they serve you the meat, and they leave the bones. And while I was walking past the bones, I saw that apparently I saw the basically the cartilage lines on the ends of the long bones. And I said, you know, I want, please, can I have this for my research? And they gave it to me for free. So, they, so that's the story of how I got these bones and. What I think I have right f right in front of me is like the pig analog of uh, the human fibula and the tibia. Don't take my word for it. So you can see that if I go like this, these two parts actually fit together. Well, my hand's blocking the view, but you got this and you have this. So you can see this is uh, you have one on the bottom, one on the top, and they come together and they're they're held together by ligaments and the connective tissue in between them. So you got that, and you can see that on the ends that this is where the growth plates are. For this one, I've been well. I've, I've been working on this uh, this bone for the last two days, where I dried it, I remove all the stuff, the muscle and the ligaments on the outside, and, I, and it's mostly hard now. Everything's like very very hardened. And for this one, I'll show you for this one first because this is the one where the, you have the closed growth plates. Now you can see on this one is that, well, the video quality is not that good, but you, you can kind of see where exactly the growth plates used to be. There is this very, very small line. You can barely see it on it, probably through YouTube right now. You can barely see it is that there's this line that goes right across it, very thin. It's less than a meter of thickness, and it just keeps on going through. Now, okay, as I go through this area, you, you, you can become it becomes a little bit more pronounced. Because keep on going, going, okay, in this area you can actually start to see where it is. This is the where it closes. Now, when I try to use the tweezers or the scissors to get into here, I couldn't. Because apparently, when, when I try to go in this area, it apparently it is, all, is completely bone. So when you actually have the epiphyseal line, that is no longer cartilage. That is actually bone ossified together. And I guess what happens is that the line actually eventually disappears as well. But, you know, when you, when you see the line, it's the indication, okay, you have no more cartilage, at least on the outside. Maybe on the inside there's still some cartilage, but on the outside it's just a complete line. And this part I've been trying to uh, pop off by using the scissors and the tweezers to get inside and try to reach in there. And it is very hard to actually remove the ends. On this this end, you can actually see very clearly where the lines are, and it's right along this edge. And for the last 20 or 30 minutes, I've been just trying to slowly using the tweezer to push in and out. You can see the area where I actually I'm just trying to get into this area right here, and removing. And I've just been pushing and pushing and pushing, and it in this area when you actually see where there's actually a difference, where it's not the line anymore, but where you can actually see where the growth plates. And this is about the thickness of maybe about one to two millimeters. That's when you know, okay, it's still open. And when I try to use the tweezers, it actually pushes in just fine. And even right now, after everything's hardened, and I'm pretty sure that if I work on this for another hour or so, I can actually push the top off and see inside. And what you get inside is what I've managed to be able to do this. I mean, I made this, this, this part area, this, this side, I managed to pop off in like maybe less than a minute. And if you look inside, you can see that... Oh, you can see, well, it's a little dark right now, and you can see that it's not flat. Apparently the growth plates are not this, it's not like a horizontal plate that you can just replace very easily by pushing it in horizontally. You can see that there's actually a, in the middle, there's actually a bump. If you look from the other plane, you can see that there's a bump in the middle, and in the growth plate area, you can see the... Well, the, you can see the grooves, and every little area is there's these little these grooves inside and outside that push out. And this would make sense because of, if we remember about the whole 
the chandra side stacking on the in the rest area rest uh, zone area and we remember that yeah apparently when you are growing the chandra sites just stack up on, on top and goes up in an actual direction and the thing i've noticed at least for this bone right here is that when i try to push these things off the the most sensitive area was not on the side that's on the epiphyseal but on the middle area in the meta metaphysis is that this growth plate actually pushed off on the other side, not the, air, the, the zone of the, rest, the, the resting zone. You can see this popped off and it all just fit right on top of this right now. Of course, let me see if I can fit this on. Now, well, you get the idea. And it's the same thing right here. For this one, it's, you can actually see where the growth plate is. This is on this side, it's about maybe three to four millimeters on the other side right here is about two to three millimeters and you can see that it's not a flat thing the things push out and push in and it's like little grooves inside and if, I, if you look at this this may be the clearest example is where you have there's like little areas which pop up and pop down and you have the little bumps in there and everything. Well, let me see if maybe if I can. Well, I got this closed window right here. So I'm gonna move. If I grab the window, you can see a little bit better. Uh, it's not that much better. Uh, so you get the grooves in and out and everything. And what what this tells me is that if we want to do probably a non-invasive way of getting maybe the growth place to regrow again. We would have to, well, if, if well, okay, if you were a child, if you not a child, but if you were still growing, you might want to, if you want to get the injections for let's say BMP or other growth factors, you might you should choose the side that's on the middle area, not on the epiphysis. And if you we want to regrow the new growth plates, we might want to focus on trying to figure out exactly how do we first get the chandra sites to stack up correctly. Because, I mean, I'm sure with like a mechanical tool, like a screw, we can get in there and grow the, we can, we can, I mean, we can do chondrocyte injections and growth factor injections, but the key, I think, is not about pushing it in this way, and this way, but, but like getting it in and getting the chondrocytes to stack up and move, push in the actual direction. And that's the key, I think. And that's the major takeaway I got from looking at this, uh, these bones right here. And uh, that's it for today. Um, hope you got something out of it. Bye.